Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the gold confetti Photoshop action. The way the action works is that you open up your photo, you trace around your subject and fill it in with a color. You run the action and this is the effect that the action will create automatically for you. So you can see that it turns your subject into gold and surrounds your subject uh, with all this confetti. It also creates this lighting effect, which you can see at the top here. Now with the lighting, you get to choose from nine different directions, so I'll quickly show you those. Okay, and if you don't want the lighting, you can, you can just turn off the lighting folder, so you're left with the gold and the confetti. You can also turn off the gold folder, which leaves you just with the confetti. And since, uh, because all the confetti is layered, you can just turn off layers to reduce the amount. Okay, and you can bring it all the way back down to just your subject made out of confetti. All right, in the second example, I'll open up this photo and recreate this. Okay, and I'll also show you how I overlay just the, uh, the original colors of our photo, just over the confetti. All right, so I'll show you a couple more examples, then we'll jump into Photoshop. So here was the before, here was the after. Alright, so let's jump into Photoshop. Okay, so here I have my photo open and before we run the action, there's just a few things we need to go through to make sure your file is set up correctly and you don't run into any problems. So firstly, when you've opened up your photo, go to image, image size, and make sure you're working with a high resolution photo. Now I found the best um, dimensions for this action is working uh, with a height or width of 4500 pixels. So look at the size of your photo and um, change the highest value, either the width or the height, to 4,500 pixels. You can work with um, photos larger than this, it's fine. Um, it's just that the higher you go up in resolution, the smaller the confetti will get, and the lower you go down in resolution, the larger the confetti will get. So all my examples, so for example this here, okay, that's with a um, height of 4,500 pixels. So you can experiment with this, but just for your first go or first few goes, try 4,500. And if you're rescaling, just make sure this link icon is clicked. All right, so click OK. <clears throat> so next what we need to do is uh, go back into the image menu and go to mode. Make sure you're working in RGB color mode and 8 bits of channel is selected. Next, hit B on the keyboard, that will activate the brush tool. So what we need to do now is load the brushes that were included in the download. So hit B, right click anywhere over your photo. That'll bring up the brushes panel. Click on this icon here and go to either load brushes or replace brushes. So I don't need any of these default Photoshop brushes, so I'm gonna click on replace. And I'm just going to select the gold confetti underscore brushes file that was included. So these are the brushes that the action needs. So when you've loaded up the brushes, hit B again. And it's very important to make sure that your brush opacity is at 100%. And this icon here, always use pressure for opacity, is turned off. Okay, those two steps are very important. All right? And that's just whenever an action requires brushes that need to be loaded, that will always be the case. So just get into the habit of... Uh, checking that. So next what I need to do is trace around my subject and fill him in with a color. So to do that what I'm going to do is hit W which will activate the magic wand tool here. Okay and because my subject is against the white background it's easy for me to select him so what I'm going to do is just click anywhere over this white area and I need to invert that selection because currently it's only selecting the white background so to do that hold down control shift I or command shift I that will invert the selection, so now my subject is just selected. So now, with the selection active, what I need to do is create a new layer. So go to Layer, New Layer. Okay, and it's very important this layer is called Brush. All in lowercase letters and no spaces. Uh, the action won't work at all if this step isn't correct. Alright, so click OK. So here we have the blank brush layer with our selection. So there's a couple of ways we can fill in the selection. We can hit G, okay, which will activate the uh, paint bucket tool here. You can grab that and just click anywhere within that selection, all right? Or you can um, you can pick any color to fill in your selection, and you, or you can hold down Alt Backspace or Option Backspace, 
which is the shortcut key to um, fill in a selection. Okay, so there we go. Um, so I've got my brush layer, there is my selection. So the next step is to load up the action. So we go to Window, Actions, and it will show up to the side here. Click on this icon here and go down to Load Actions and select the gold confetti action and it will pop up here. Okay, so it's all the actions are within this folder. All right, so here they are all here. So these ones down the bottom here, I've just got in brackets, don't touch. You don't want to um, play with any of those. Don't rename them. Um, don't record anything into them. This is the first action that you want to play. It's the gold confetti action. These actions here are all the different light ray directions. Now these you need to play, or you can play after you've run the gold confetti action if you want to change um, the light direction. The default light direction is from the top here, the top middle downwards. So uh, what we need to do now is just select the gold confetti action and click play. Okay, now after you click play, there's just one step um, that you need to go through. For anyone using uh, CS6 and below, there's two steps. So just wait for this second pop-up window and follow the steps there. But for CC users, just this first step here. It says, in the next step, use the slider in the threshold window to create an even balance of colors throughout your subject. So all you need to do here is click continue. Okay, and you'll get this threshold window show up. So you can see our subject is has a few colors running through him. Now the idea here is that you just want to use this slider here to create an even balance of the colors. So I'm just going to drag this to the right so we've got an even amount of blue, red, and black. Okay, and when you've done that, hit enter. So you get the second window now, but we've just got to do the same. Drag this, I'm going to drag this one to the right so we get an even balance of orange, red, blue, and black. Hit enter, and then the last one, we've just got green. So just repeat the same step again, and hit enter. So that's all we need to do. The action will now run through to the end. It will take anywhere between one to two minutes, depending on the speed of your computer. So I'll just fast forward the video and I'll get to the result. All right, so the action's all done and you can see uh, the result there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is just collapse this actions panel and we're gonna go into the layer panel here. Now, the first step you always wanna do with any action is to collapse all the folders that are open, okay? So to do that, the gold confetti folder will already be selected for you. Hold down Control, Alt, or Command, Option, and click on this arrow to the left of the folder icon. Click on that, release the keys, and twirl open the folder again, and all the folders are collapsed. All right, so the first thing, I'm gonna jump around the lay order a bit here, and just, just go to the most important ones I think you're gonna to wanna to customize first, all right? Now, the first one we're gonna look at is the light rays folder, okay? So if I turn that on and off, you can see that that is our main light source. So if you don't want any, any light rays, just turn off that folder or delete it, okay? Now, if you wanna change the direction, what you need to do is select the light rays folder and delete it, okay? And then select any one of these directions here. So I want the light source to come from the top right here and head down to the bottom left. So we just look through the list here and go to the top right to bottom left, okay? So all you need to do is select it, click play, and it will take just a couple of seconds. Okay, so there we go. There's our light source, and that fades off down here to the bottom left, and it creates the light rays folder for you here. All right, so I'm just gonna collapse the actions panel, and we'll take a quick look at the light rays folder just while we're here. So if you twirl it open, we have our light source color. If you wanna add a bit of a color, you can just turn that on. You can double click in this box as well to change color there if you want. We have uh, the main light source here and I've got in brackets here opacity. So whenever you see a layer that has uh, opacity on it, I'm basically telling you to adjust that layer's opacity to, it, to affect the design. Okay, so this one here, I'm just gonna click and hold uh, the word opacity here. Click and drag. And you see, as I drag it to the left and right, that is just increasing and decreasing the opacity. So by default, it's at 40%. Okay, you can also just select the layer and hit numbers on the keyboard. So if I want it 80%, I'll hit eight. That'll adjust it there. Same with the light rays. Um, currently it's at 6%. I recommend keeping this pretty low, maybe a maximum of 10%. 
otherwise it just gets a bit too much. So um, that's 6%. So the next layer that I want to jump to is within the gold folder here. So if you turn off the gold folder, you're just left, left with the confetti, all right? But I'll, I'll come back to all that. So let's jump inside here. But what I want to talk to you about is this layer here called Reveal Original Photo Details. Now, sometimes when you're running the action on subjects, the gold might distort your subject's face a little bit, and you might want to bring those details uh, closer back to your original photo. Now, to do that, what you want to do is select the mask on this layer. Now, you can see this mask here is black, so currently uh, the mask is hiding everything. So if I turn this layer on and off, they won't do anything, okay? Now, if I select the mask and hit Control or Command I to invert that color to white, you can see it just shows our original photo, okay? But it's placed down here so that it matches the color and the lighting and contrast and everything. So what you want to do <coughs> is just select the mask, hit B. Now, when you hit B after you've run the action, by default, I've selected this soft brush for you. So it's just ideal for brushing onto masks. Okay, and what we want to do is make sure white is our active color because I want to brush white onto the mask to reveal more of the original details in his face. So to, to switch between black and white, just hit X. Okay, so white. Now to change brush size, use the left and right square brackets. Now I just want to scale this up so it just covers his face like this and it's going to click once. Okay, so you can see what that's done. It's brought the details um, back to the original photo. But the key step here is to create a blend between the original photo and the gold look. Now, the reason why I want you to click just once is so that you can use this tool here, the Fade Brush tool, okay? So when you've clicked once, click on the Fade Brush tool and it brings up this Fade window here. Now, if I drag this opacity to zero, it brings it back to the gold look. So what we can do here is just increase this opacity slider to create a blend between our original photo and the gold look, all right? So I'm just gonna use say about 47% blend, okay? And I'm happy with that. So I'll come back to the gold folder in a few moments. I just wanna to talk to you about um, how I've set up all these confetti layers. Okay, so firstly, I'm just gonna turn off all of this, okay? Uh, you can see this little, uh, this outline of everything, that's coming from the overall sharpness. So if you're adjusting the layers, you, you know, if you're, um, say you're hiding confetti layers and masking things out, I recommend just turning this overall sharpness off. But if you plan on just running the action, keeping it as a default um, result, just keep it on. Okay, I'm just gonna turn it off and I'll turn all these off. I'll hide the light rays. So down the bottom here, we've got this folder called, oh, we'll go to this one first, the subject confetti. So if you turn that one on, okay, that will just show uh, your subject in confetti. So if that's the effect that you want, that's all you need to do is run the action and turn everything off and just leave subject confetti on. Now, if you go inside this folder, okay, we've got this setup here. Now this setup is the same for the front blurred confetti and the outer uh, confetti. So let's go back inside. First of all, we have this layer called adjust brightness. So if you double click on this, you can just use these handles here to adjust the brightness of the confetti. Okay, we have this one here, adjust overall color tint. If you double click on that, you can play around with these handles and you can adjust the tint of the confetti. And you've got this other color option here, change overall colors. Here you can just use this hue, slant, this hue uh, handle to quickly change the color. All right, let's hide that. So now we've got the subject confetti layers broken down um, into five different layers, okay? So I'll just turn all those off. All right, so down the bottom here, by default, subject confetti uh, number five is turned off. Okay, so just remember that one's turned off. You can jump inside there and turn it on if you want. Just shows more of a defined outline around the subject. Okay, but you can see as I turn these on, it starts to build up the look. So don't feel um, you need to use all the layers. Maybe you just want like a subtle outline like, like that. And what you can also do is control the color of each one of those different sections. So you can just double click on these boxes and change the color. All right. 
Now that is the same setup with the outer confetti, so I'll turn that one on. Okay, so you can see what that does. You can go inside this folder. This one's broken down into a few more layers here. The top layers here are the same, just brightness and the color options. So here you can, again, just break this down. I'll just quick turn these off. Okay, and you can turn them on one by one. So from the bottom here, these ones appear closest to the subject, and as you go up, they start to spread further out. All right. So yeah, just keep in mind that you just you might only just want to use say say this one here. Okay, that might be what you want. All right, turn those back on. And the last confetti folder was this one here, the front blurb confetti. So if I turn, I'll just turn this one off. So if I turn this one on, these are the larger, um, more blurred out confetti particles that appear a bit closer to the camera. So I'll turn that back on, so you can see that there. Uh, again, just the same setup. Here there are five different layers of control with the confetti, and you can yeah, of course, change the colours. Right. So, and what you can also do here. If you want the subject confetti to appear on top of your subject, all you need to do is select the subject confetti folder, drag that above the gold folder, and you can see if I undo and redo that, you can see how the confetti now sits on top of your subject. So some creative ways you might want to work with this is that, say you've dragged it above your subject and I don't want any confetti over his face because I can't really see anything there. So what you can do is just select the mask here, right? Uh, hit B. Make sure black is your active color, so I hit X to make uh, black my active color. And I just let the mask start brushing where I don't want those particles to appear. Okay? And that is the same for the gold folder. I've just put a bit of a reminder here, brush black uh, on mask. So if I brush black here, what you can actually do is erase that gold, so you can create a blend between um, the subject confetti and it sort of blends up into the goal look. So you can create some really cool effects with blending that way. This layer here, uh, subject confetti true luminosity. If I turn off the gold, if you turn this one on, it just uses more of the true luminosity from the original photo and sort of overlays that. Um, well, by default, it overlays it over the subject confetti. So I just turn that one on and off um, if you're turning off the gold folder and just see um, what it does to your design, if you like it or not. Okay, uh, I'm going to keep that there, I quite like that. So let's now jump back into the uh, gold folder here, and I'll talk to you about how I set that up. Uh, what I might do is actually just hide this mask, uh, hide this here, and I'm just going to turn off the subject confetti, just so I can see the gold clearer. If you want to quickly disable the mask, like I did there, hold down shift and click on the mask, you see that X appears to it, so I can temporarily disable that. All right, let's go inside here. So here's the gold folder. So these are all the layers where you can actually control the look of the gold. So first of all, we have this overall gold brightness layer. So you can double click on that, play around with these handles here, and that will that will uh, quickly affect the overall brightness, okay? Uh, the gold color toning, you don't really want to do too much in here. The only one I recommend playing around with is the gold tone two. You can see in brackets here I've got opacity, so if I press that to 100, then 0, you can see how that um, adds a lot of contrast into it. By default it's at 30%, I found that was a good level, but you can play around with that. Uh, we went through this one, the reveal original photo details. That's just important if you want to yeah, clear up any um, area of your photo where you want to bring it more back to the original look of your um, photo, your original photo. So these two layers here, uh, emboss edges and subject definition, you see when I turn them on and off. So what they do, they just help um, add a bit of sharpening and a bit of clarity into the details, into the finer details of your uh, subject. These folders here, one, two, three, four, brightness controller, one, two, three, and four. They are, we'll just go inside, open up the, I'll open up these three here. So you've just got these levels controllers in here. So if you double click on any one of these, here you can adjust um, really specific areas um, of your of the goal look. So you can just play around with these handles here to really fine tune uh, the appearance of the gold. So I can click on this one here, 
play around with this. Okay, so if your subject appears maybe a bit too dark, um, yeah, just jump into any one of these brightness controllers and play around with this. I think this is a good one. If your if your subject's too dark, grab this handle here, my brightness controller three, and drag this to the left. That will add a lot more brightness back in. Okay, I'm just going to undo that, and that's just the same with brightness controller four. Don't worry about this layer here. Just just use the brightness controller. Okay. Now this layer here, I'm going to zoom right in here. It might take a second. It's so big. Okay. I'll move up here. All right. So this layer here, add glitter. So you can see around his chest here, you can see the glitter that I've put over the gold. I'll turn that off. Might take a second. So turn that off. That just removes the glitter. All right. So I'll zoom out. Okay, so that's without the glitter, that's with the glitter. From a distance here, you can't really notice it, but if you're um, focusing on details, then you might want to check that one out. Um, shadow reflectivity, if you go inside here, again, it's just a levels controller. You can double click on this and play around with these handles here. What it does, it brings a lot of uh, brightness back into the darker. So you can see if I drag this to the right, Okay, you can see how that looks more like the original photo, but as I drag this into the left, okay, you start to get a bit more of a reflective look. All right, I'm gonna undo that. So that's one to play around with if you want. Uh, the shadow brightness, you don't really wanna play around with this, but again, it's just another levels controller. Uh, you can, I think you need to adjust this one here. Okay, that will just bring more uh, lightness into the dark areas of your photo. Okay, so that is the gold folder. So I'm going to collapse this and collapse the gold folder. Um, next, what I'm going to talk about is the add high, highlights glow layer here. Okay, I'm just going to turn on this. Actually, I'll leave it off for the moment. So by default, this was turned on. Okay, so when I turn it on and off, you can see how it just adds a little bit of glow to the highlights of your subject. Now a creative way that you can use this is cranking this all out to 100. Currently it's at 20% by default. So if I drag that up to 100%, you can clearly see what it does. But what I like to do is when I've turned up to 100%, I select the mask and I invert that mask, uh, control command I to flip it to black so it's hidden. Now what I like to do is actually just brush on where I want that glow to appear. Okay, so I make sure white is my active color. I hit X. And maybe I'm just going to brush with 50% opacity. So with the brush tool out, to change the brush opacity, all you need to do is hit the numbers on the keyboard. So I'll hit 5. Change that to 50%. Make sure the mask is selected. And I can just start brushing. Okay, you can see how that adds a nice glow to the highlights. So I just look around um, my photo and just look for the hot spots and just brush on where you want a little bit of extra glow. Okay, that's looking good. I might turn that back on. Okay, looking good. Now this layer here, uh, overlay photo colors over confetti. So if you turn this one on, what this does, it just overlays the original colors of your photo over everything. Okay, and again, you can control this just by brushing onto the mask. All right, so if you want to control that, flip the mask to black and grab a white brush, and then you can just start brushing away to reveal um, the original colors. This layer here, reveal original photo. I like to include this layer with every action. It's just, if you want to, I'll just hide the mask. You can see all it is, it's a cutout of um, the area that you defined. And it's just put on a layer and it's hidden. So if you just let the mask and start brushing, maybe, I'm just gonna hide this. Maybe you wanna create just a blend in areas between um, your original photo and the gold, you know? Something like that. Okay, so you can control, and if you use a lower uh, opacity brush, 
Um, you get to see that bit more of that shininess from the goals still sit on top of um, your subject, which I think looks pretty cool. All right, so that's that. So this one here, overall contrast. If you want to quickly adjust the overall contrast of your design, just adjust the opacity here. It's at 20%, turn it to 100, zero. So you can just slowly increase that and get that to a level you think looks good. Overall brightness, just another quick controller for you to play around with, um, just to affect the overall brightness. Okay. And if you want to play around with the uh, adjusting these colors, just uh, yeah, double click on this and play around with these handles here. All right. And if you want to apply it just a solid color over your entire design, uh, just turn that on and double click on this box here and change the color. Okay, I'm going to turn that sharpness back on and let's turn that back on and light rays. Okay, so that is my completed design. I think that goes through everything except the background color here. If you want to change that, um, you can just change the background color. You can choose white if you want. And if you want your um, all the confetti and the gold to fall down onto your original background, just turn off the background color layer here. Okay, and that just falls back onto your uh, original photo. All right. So a couple more quick adjustments here. I might just select the overall sharpening mask here. I'm just going to brush away. I can see a bit of detail down here. Um, a bit of extra gold there. I'll remove that. And I might just go into the light rays folder and increase this just a little bit. All right. And just another reminder, if you want to change the light ray direction, delete this light ray folder and select a different direction. And if you want to run the action again, um, but maybe redefine your brush area, uh, all you need to do is select the gold confetti folder, delete it, and your brush layer is left up the top here if you want to refine the selection a bit. Okay, so there's the before and there's the after. So now I'm just going to open up the next example and we'll just go through the same workflow again just so that you're really familiar with it and um, see what we get. Okay, I've got the next example open and the first thing I'm going to check is my image size, image, image size. And like I said earlier, I recommend a width or height, whatever the, the higher of the, the two dimensions, change it to uh, 4,500 pixels. Okay. Click OK there. So what I need to do now is create my brush layer. So uh, go to layer, new layer. And this must be called brush, all in lowercase letters, no spaces. Click OK. With the brush layer selected, I want to make a selection around my subject. I'm going to hit W, activate the wand tool. Um, if you're using the wand tool and you're making a selection on a blank layer, you need to make sure sample all layers is selected so that it samples um, my main photo layer here. So I'm going to hit, just click anywhere over this white background. I'm going to hold down shift to increase that selection uh, under his arms here and in here. Uh, and here. Alright, now I need to invert that selection because all I've done is selected the white background. Control shift I, command shift I, invert that. And let's just change that to a green, doesn't matter what color you pick. Uh, to fill the selection, actually now before we fill the selection, what we might do is go to select and select a mask. So selected mask is uh, really cool. It just enables you to refine your selection. And um, I usually recommend turning this one on, Smart Radius, and just increasing the radius a bit. That just helps with the edge detection uh, a bit. So yeah, check that one out. And if you want to brush on, uh, if you want to refine your selection, you can use this Refine Edge Brush Tool. And say, you know, brush around the hair um, or any areas where um, the magic wand didn't really do a good job. If you want to say that um, you've masked, uh, the selected mask has actually erased some, so you can see through his socks here, see how it's eaten away at some of his, that white area. So I can just brush that back on. Might undo that last bit. Um, his boot. I think that's looking okay. Right, I'll just keep with that, so click OK, and that's just adjusted the selection. Now I just want to fill that selection with a color, so Alt Backspace or Option Backspace, 
and that's that done. So now I need to just open up the actions panel. I'm going to hit B just to double check my brush capacity is at 100%. It is, that's good. So I need to select the gold confetti action, click play. Going to hit enter here or click continue because I know what to do. So I just want to create this even balance of colors. All right. Now the reason why I had to make this step manual is that everyone's threshold levels are different. Some photos you might need to drag it to the left to create an even balance. Um, most of the time it's to the right, but if I um, sort of hard coded this step in, um, the confetti results will not be as accurate um, on everyone's photos. So this just gives you a bit more control. All right, so I'm just going to hit enter right there. I want to create even balance of the colors, so enter there and green. Doesn't need to be perfect, just somewhere, somewhere close is fine. I'm going to click OK. Yeah, that's all I need to do. So I'll jump forward to the result. All right, so there we go. Now, before I collapse the actions panel here, I just want to, I forgot to mention this earlier, is that you can't rename this gold confetti folder. Uh, and the reason behind that is that this action here plays other actions. So it plays an action within an action and it needs to refer to the exact name of the folder. So that's just how they work at the moment. And until Adobe changes that, um, you can't really change the name of the folder, right? Otherwise, you'll get a play error. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'm just going to keep this open because I'm going to change the light direction in a second. So firstly, I'm going to just collapse uh, all these folders. So again, just Control Alt or Command Option. Click on this arrow, release the keys, then twirl the folder back open. So I'm going to delete the light rays folder. Okay, and I'm going to change the direction again to the top right corner. So I look for top right to bottom left, click play, just take a couple of seconds. All right, so there we go. Now you can see here how I was talking about before, how the gold um, can sort of distort the facial features a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is go down into the gold folder, select the reveal original photo details uh, mask, okay? Grab a white brush, so I'm going to hit B, hit X, make white my active color. With one click, so I, I scale the brush over his face, just like that. And with one click, do that. Now what I want to do, because that doesn't look right, is go to Edit, Fade, Brush Tool, and then work on the blend between the gold and the original photo. So something more like that will do. Okay, and that's pretty much what all I wanted to do with this one. Um, one other thing I might do is again, uh, do that thing where I change the highlights glow to 100% and I, let's close that, and I invert the mask to hide, hide everything. And then I brush on where I want that glow to appear. So white is my active color and I'm just gonna change the brush opacity to 50%. And I'm just going to look around for areas where I want that glow to appear. Maybe a bit there, a little bit there, here. Okay, it's looking good. So next what I want to show you how to do is create this look where you're just um, overlaying your original uh, photo colors over the confetti. So let's do that. So what don't we need? We don't, for this, I don't want the light rays. I don't want the gold, okay? I want to turn off the, uh, the highlights. I want to turn off the sharpening. And all I want to do here is turn on the overlay photo colors. And that's it, that's all we need to do. So one other thing you might want to play around with is the outer confetti. Uh, you might want to adjust the brightness here. Now, now bringing this handle into the right will sort of crush the visibility down, so I can work on that. I can bring this one down as well. Maybe I don't want the front blur confetti. And just remember that with the subject confetti, the outline layer is turned off by default, so I can turn that on. Just makes, uh, defines the subject a bit better. By default, I turned it off. I just found that um, when I tested this out on a lot of photos that I didn't like the way um, by default the uh, that bottom layer here sort of created this spiky look around the edges. Okay, so 
it's really good to turn that one on if you're turning the gold uh, fold off. So this one here. Okay, um, I might I might turn that one off. And lastly, it might just add a bit of overall brightness to the design, increase that a bit. All right. So guys, that is it. That covers all the layers and all the folders. As you can see, it's really easy to use. Um, you can spend a bit of time if you want just playing around with the layers and folders and just uh, maybe adding in some text in, into the design. If you're adding text, experiment with putting it um, further down the lay order here as that text will adopt the colors and you know the confetti will then sit on top of the text which could look cool. Alright, um, I'll put a link down to my help page below. So if you have any troubles, uh, check through that page first and uh, you also find my email address there if you're having troubles uh, beyond what's covered on the help page. Um, there's also links down to my portfolio below. I've got over 100 of these automated effects um, to help you out with your, your workflow. So check those out. Uh, but if not, have fun using this action. Thanks.